Okay, so in this video, I'm going to take the last 23 to 24 years of my experience as a medical doctor in homeopathy, as an author, mentor, or homeopathic software creator, and the director of TQFS Academy, um, to actually try and condense the study of CalCARP into a four-part framework that I use to follow and study any new or old polycrest remedy completely from scratch. I call it my stages template and I've taught these, this template to thousands of students and members in my academy over the last 20 years. Right, so if you're new to the template for studying Metro Medica, please check my free video on mastering the Metro Medica through different stages. It's a gold standard on how to approach cases and study and master the Metro Medica. And I'll put that link to this video below this, right? So to start with, there are four levels to this template. Stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four. And we're going to study Calcarbonica or Calcarea Carbonica in these four stages. Now, if you've missed stage one and two, which is about prescribing Calcarb as an organ remedy for one-sided diseases or as a therapeutic remedy for specific diseases, then check my free training on Calcarb stage one and two, which is the part one of this video. But now we are moving to part two, and this is all about CalCARB study at stage three and stage four, all right? So first, let's start with stage three. Now, what's stage three? Okay, so it is about looking at a remedy as a whole, right? All the peculiar characteristics, the genres, the personality shines through at stage three. It is about understanding the connections between these different parts of the remedy together as a whole. Now, how do you get this information? So there are different you know, ways to study this information and I'm going to speak about the favorite ways that I study and look at this information. There are, the first one is from the Metro America and the Proving's. Now, if you realize, most of our favorite books, our constitutional books like Kent's Lectures and Allen's Keynotes, they are all about giving the understanding of Calcarbonica as a constitutional remedy. But we can derive this information from the provings. Now, remember, when Calcarb is proved, mostly the remedies, is any remedy is proved at stage at a 30 potency or lower, right? So this information does not come up, the stage three information does not come up directly through the provings. You need to use the concept of generalization to get stage three information because most of our provings in that way are incomplete and hence Bonninghausen proposed the concept of analogy. It's a powerful concept to complete the provings and complete the process and generalize the information. So what is generalization? If a symptom is present on three or more locations in a remedy, it becomes a general. And then you can put this information uh, together to understand the general holistic concept of the remedy. Let me give you an example. So if you look at the proving of Calcarbonica from Allen's Encyclopedia of Pure Materia Medica, and say if you are looking at um, coldness, okay? Now you can see that there are about 10 results for coldness in Calcarbonica that have been in different provers at different times in different locations. One of them is loneliness is very oppressive with coldness of face, hands, and feet. Then you have another symptom, icy coldness in and on the head. Then you have teeth, cannot endure the air or any coldness. Frequent cramps in the intestinal tract, especially in the evening with coldness in the thigh. Severe palpitations, anguish, restlessness, oppression of the chest and pain in the back. She makes a loud sound as if every breath would leave the body with coldness of the body and cold sweat. Another symptom, she started so much from the slightest prick of a needle in the finger that she became nauseated. The tongue, lip and hands became very white and cold. Coldness of the forehead and face with obscuration of the sight, uneasiness, flushes of heat, 
trembling, she was much obliged to lie down. Mesmerizing relieved her at once. Then we have fainting with coldness, indistinct vision, constant chilliness and coldness with pale, sickly look. Cold and numb on the side of the back on which he laid on during midday sleep. And teeth again cannot end your coldness. So you see different provers, different parts of the body. And then you see the personality of Cal Carp come through as somebody who is fearful, nervous, anxious, very cold, profuse sweating, you know, finding it, the, the vision gets blurred, there is palpitation, she faints easily or he cannot endure it. And that is the type of personality and the nervous person that you see coming up even in your clinics. And that is how you understand Calcar both in the provings and in the clinics through the confirmation. And that gives you the, the bigger picture, the more generalized picture of Calcarbonica as a constitutional remedy. So you would be more inclined to use Calcarb and it will be much more successful in people who are these nervous, anxious, chilly, cold, fainty types than people who are hot and aggressive and violent if that makes sense. So that is the idea of looking at these provings, looking through the spectrum and generalizing it. Okay, makes sense? So you're getting creative, but you're remaining grounded, right? Now, let's look at the second way of studying the generals of a remedy at stage three. And this is what I call group analysis. Now, what is group analysis? If the symptom is present in three or four remedies belonging to the same group, it becomes a general. So this is not just a contemporary concept. It was first proposed by Hahnemann. In fact, in my video on mastering the Matra Medica, I have explained how Hahnemann, um, you know, what Hahnemann exactly spoke about group analysis. So check that video first. But to get to the basics, remember when we are studying CalCarp, we're looking at the common calcium and the carbonate theme, as well as the differentiation of the different calcium salts to form the group analysis and form the common generals, right? Now, this process itself is so powerful because it's going to expand your Matra Medica understanding 10 times, 20 times, because you are going to study not just the CalCarb remedy, you're also being going to be able to study the different calcium salts together at the same time. It's the best leverage of your Metro Medica. Let me show you how. So let's go to the remedy analysis and look at the general group analysis of Calcarbonica, right? To do, do this, I'm going to go to the periodic table and add calcium, which will which has about 27 remedies, the calcium salts, and add all of them and we'll analyze it using some advanced search. We're going to use the remedy count, which is how many remedies we want in the rubric to at least three. So we want at least three calcium salts, so we get the common analysis and we'll keep the rubric size to at most 50, so we have, you know, more or less unique good rubrics. And we say analyze and what we have here is a very interesting picture of calcium based on at least three or more calcium salts in these rubrics. And then look at this. There is this ambitiousness for money. There is this anxiety about financial matters, anxiety coming from the stomach. Then you have um, fears of, you know, delusions of dog or fire of horrible things. You have lots and lots of fears of accidents to loved ones, of birds and bugs and, you know, deaths, about being injured, about hearing bad news, snakes and storms, so a lot of fears in different parts and different situations. And then you have um, some sort of sadness, depression, um, and uh, you know, in children, about darkness, there is perspiration, there is misfortune, and then you have a very sensitive person, a sensitive child. And then if you go and look at the physicals, so this is the mental picture, let's look at the physicals. And in the physicals, you can see in the boarding house, and you have the dislocation, spontaneous dislocation of joints, 
ulcers or sores in the legs. You have, uh, you know, a tendency to have goiter with heart complaints. Knee joint, swelling of the knee joint um, is a very strong spear of action, which is a general, then excited by drinking cold things, membranous dysmenorrhea, spasms and cramps, dentition slow, inflamed roots of the teeth, sores and scabs and crusts in the nose, discharges of the ears, infection and inflammation of the bones of the ears, ulcers of the cornea. And then in the Kenton books, you have the tumors of fibroids, the cysts, the polyps, the, you know, the varicosity of the veins. In general, they're aggravated by getting wet and damp, swelling and softening of the bones, cancerous affections, abscesses, and that is the general sphere of action. That's the general pathology, which is, um, you know, tendencies and susceptibilities that comes up as a calcar picture when you look at both the mind and the body. So this is the general calcium picture. Now, how do you find individual calc salts? How do you study individual calc salts along with calcium carbonates? So say, for example, you want to look at how is calcium carbonica different from, say, something like calcfos. So we're going to go and use a contrasting feature where we want rubrics that have calcium but do not have calcfos and rubrics that have calcfos but do not have calcium. And let's analyze. So let's start and look at the anxiety of calcium carbonica and how is it different from the anxiety of calc FOS, right? So you have, you have two anxious people and you're trying to understand both have similar calcium traits, but now you're trying to understand which one's coming up. So you can see in general anxiety about everything in general is calc carb. But if you have anxiety in children, but with specific tendency to chest complaints, then calc force is more strongly indicated. Another thing that you see, if there is anxiety with palpitations and weakness, that's more calc force rather than calcium. And this is interesting. If you have anxiety and there is a concomitant of colic in the abdomen, which is painful, tearing, and especially in children, then it's more calc force than calcarea carbonica. So can you see very subtle differences, but if you have these sort of symptoms, then you are more inclined to use calcium phosphate than calc carb. Let's look at another example. Say now we go and check calcium carbonica with say calcarea sulf, and we analyze. And we scroll through the mind symptoms and check the differences, the subtle differences between these two salts. And look at this beautiful group of symptoms. Calc carbonica has no issues around being appreciated. However, calcium sulfate desires for appreciation. Desires for appreciation by father, desires for appreciation by mother. Calc sulf is extremely specific when children in sibling rivalry that I've confirmed in my practice where the child feels that the other, the sibling is much more appreciated by his parents and that is this envy of who get, who is more loved by the parent and that comes up very strongly here so it's like lamenting that he or she is not appreciated is a very strong calc self symptom and i would then prefer calcium self even if i'm looking at a constitutional calc child okay so now let's move on to the study of calcium carbonica at stage four now, remember in stage three, you were looking at just the mind and body as a whole, right? But at stage four, you are going to step up. The whole holistic concept goes much more deeper at the core. At stage four, you are going to go beyond mind and body. You're going to go right at the energetic and the source level of calcium carbonate, right? How do we get this information? Most of a classical database, remember, is focused, you know, with proving information at about stage two-ish, right? Or stage three at the most. But stage four core information, you cannot directly assess through the provings. Just like stage three, you know, where you had to derive the generals, 
and you have to use the generalization concept, at stage four, you take this even further. You go to the grand generals, right at the source and the core sensory information, right? So how do we do this? There are three of my favorite ways to do this and find this unique core energetic information from the remedy. First is again, Matra Medica and Proving's. So how do we get this information from the Proving's? Now let's look at the unique Proving symptoms of CalCarb. Let's see what sets CalCarb apart. To do that, we'll select CalCarb and we'll look at advanced options for unique symptoms. We need at least one remedy, which is CalCarb, and we want the rubric size to be exactly one as well. And so these are the unique symptoms of CalCarb from every repertory and every type of database that we have. And what do we see? We see anxiety with shuddering. We, need, we see anxiety at the pit of the stomach. We see sensitivity to cruelty. Children cannot bear any cruelty in cinema or done to other children. We see some interesting delusions. Body parts dashed to pieces. Again, we see fears, some interesting ones. Anemia from iron deficiency. Then we see cruelties, again, fearful of cruelties. Death off by fasting from hung hunger. Fear of wounds. Fear of osteoporosis, brittle bones, indolence and aversion to work and quitting the thriving business, shrieking and screaming and startling at the prick of a needle. And then we'll go and look at the books. And what do the books say at stage four? Now at stage four, one of my favorite book is Borges Synoptic Key because it has the generalization at a stage four pathological level. And what do you see here? Again, you have some interesting regions but look at the bold print. Fat flabby blondes who sweat easily on head or chest during. Look at that soft, torpid, scrofulous habits. Profuse, easily sprained, grows fat but not strong. Takes cold easily, malnourished, faulty bones, open fontanels. Curvatures, calculus tendencies rickets depressed forgetful learns poorly so that sums it up it's weak it's soft it's you know malnourished it's not strong and it easily sprains dislocates and it's faulty there is no proper development that is mind and body the second way to understand stage four information is from the understanding of the kingdom now, for CalCarb, we're going to look at the periodic table because it's a mineral and we're going to find the common themes of the individual elements of CalCarb based on their position in the periodic table. So calcium carbonate is basically made up of calcium, carbon and oxygen, right? And calcium belongs to row 4 and carbon and oxygen belongs to row 2. So you can use the kingdom filter in, the, in your softwares and derive this information. But homeopaths who excel at stage four, such as Jan Scholten, Sankarin, they've done enough work for us to be able to just access this information, right? So if you look at um, the information in the structure of homeopathy by Sankarin, this is what he gives you as the common general sensation of calcium at stage four. And that is the need for security in terms of money, in terms of finances, in terms of relationships, in terms of getting a house, getting a job, getting a help. So what is happening is it is all about the structure of calcium. It doesn't have the solidity and the ability to withstand pressure and resistance, which is the key theme of row four elements. Okay, so this is the calcium. It is weak and it cannot withstand pressure and resistance and it is brittle and can break easily. That is the sensation. Now, if you go to the general sensation of row two, where carbon and oxygen belongs to, you will find that there is issue around dependence and independence, basically from the mother figure. It is a baby-like state, right? A baby in the womb. So there is this intense reactivity and sensitivity to sudden danger, 
violence, noise, unexpected situations, and the baby startles and clings. So the common sensation combining these two of CalCarb is the need for protection. And to get this protection, they need to show a viral reaction. And then we're looking at the third source of information at stage four for calcium carbonate, and that is the source information. Now, source information is where does this remedy source is sourced from, right? So calcium carbonate comes from the middle layer of the oyster shell, and this belongs to the mollusk family. It is connected to the seawater and the sea salts and the mollusk group of animals. So the common general sensation of mollusks has been derived and what it is is about being vulnerable and soft and tender and delicate because of the soft bodies and they are covered in the outer hard shell which is made up of calcium. Now calcium carbonate is something that offers protection and safety to these delicate creatures from the sea predators, from the chemical changes in the water, from the environmental threat. So in danger, they retreat inside the confines of calcium carbonate shell for safety. Can you see how the themes are coming up together? Now, all this information is derived from drug provings and distilled through practice. I would love if you can check Dr. Aradhna's Chitra, who has done some amazing work on mollusks in her books and you know i'll leave a link to the to the books below but remember this is the energy and the essence and the source and you cannot delete it from the substance itself great to have these themes and have these sensations and source information but it has to be applicable in clinics right so it has to be confirmed by clinical ways and so i would love if you can check my case study on on calcium carbonate in a child I've prescribed at stage four based on the source information, right? I'm going to leave the link of this particular case study after this video so that you can go and look at it. But I think in this way, you will complete the entire understanding of calcium carbonate at stage three and four. And it's the beauty of understanding our metromedica at all these different stages with all these different components. And then you look at the whole view and you're switching hats uh, whenever a patient comes at a particular stage. So you can find those facets of the remedy as we see our patients. So this is work in progress, obviously. A remedy understanding is constantly developing and evolving and through clinical use. And if we have more and more case studies at each stage, our expansion of the metromedica will go to the next level. So, but if you do this homework that I've taught you in these two videos, you will expand your metromedica on mastering not just calcium carbonate, but the entire group of calcium salts and carbonates along with the mollusks. And this is how I have built my Metromedica from 100 remedies to thousands of remedies, because it's fun this way. And this is how contemporarily you should learn remedies. This is what I would do to study any new or old remedy today right? Not just sticking to one particular source or one particular book that was like so yesterday, right? So this is how you can become the best version and the best homeopath that you can be. I want you to leave a comment for me below. Give me a reaction. Let me know how you think about this. What do you think? How does it apply to your practice? What confirmations you've had in your practice? And I love to answer and, you know, discuss with you in the sections below.